Throne Breaker. All right, so we are still in Angren. We've just found out about Gurney Cora, who could be a possible villain or a friend, probably a villain. <laughs> Since it seems like a pretty big boy. And yeah, we're gonna just discover this map a bit more and see what we can do. Also, something that I wanna say is I will be skipping non story fights. So when I get into like a random encounter fight, I will just skip it. I won't skip puzzles, I won't skip story fights, but like random standard battles against like monsters. There's really no point in me showing this because it's just the same gameplay over and over again as the deck is never really gonna change. That's just something I want to say so that the videos aren't too long because there will probably be still more of these random fight encounters that I can just skip also make the editing a lot more easy for myself. So yeah, that's just something I wanted to point out. So story battles won't be skipped but these random encounters on the street will be skipped and you will just see the victory screen. All right, there's a puzzle though. Puzzles we, puzzles we play, puzzles we show. Destroy all enemy units, use your leader ability. Okay, all right, this battle will last only one round. Okay, so these damage an enemy and all enemies with the same power by one. And loyal gain one charge. Boost an ally by four and give it one armor, then trigger all loyal abilities. Okay. Reduce Meave's cooldown to zero and damage unit by four. If it was destroyed, repeat this ability. Okay. So, I mean, gaining one charge is the play here. Okay. Well, that was easy. Wait, this is four? Yeah, this is four. Pushing in the mort. <laughs> that was one of the easiest puzzles ever. Whatever. Okay, marching orders. Well, that was an easy marching orders, I guess. Wait, does marching orders actually reduce Meave's cooldown to zero? Reduce Meave's cooldown to zero, yeah, that's what it does. I'm not gonna use that. <laughs> that's kinda, kinda useless. What do you want, sir? My queen, a local peasant by name of Gozimir, has requested an audience. He says he's found a curious object in elven ruins, claims it emits a magical aura of some sort. I cannot vouch for the truth of his word, but the man himself seems sunk in an aura of hooch. Your grace, do you wish to buy the so-called artifact? I won't haggle with the village, sought so relieve him of the object. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just take it away from him, I'm sorry. My lady, a traveling merchant has stopped in our camp, he's invited to view our verse, what is your reply? What's the better deal here? Well, clearly, oh, well, I accidentally clicked that, didn't really want to click that. Your grace, the charts say we near Tuzli. Angren renders charts helpless to show the way, I fear. Soon we shall halt to sight our exact position. We will know then if our path is true. As you wish, your grace. All right, let's kill these Nilf Guardians in a puzzle. Destroy all enemy units. Meave is prepared to deliver the final blow. Okay. Damage your unit by one, then trigger all loyal abilities. Increase the damage dealt by one for each unit destroyed by this ability. Okay. Mark an ally when it is destroyed. Move it to hand instead of graveyard and destroy itself. Okay, so I think... Is this... This is order, right? Yeah, so I think I start with this. Actually, no, I start with one of these boys. One bolt Okay. So I do this. And he's my leader. I'm a monster. So we have to kill these guys, okay. And we kind of messed up there. Okay, but I get it now. So we have to hit this boy. Then use mantlet on this. Kill this. I guess also hit this then. Just 
kill this, right? Alright, now we do this. Just take the whole finger. Give me a time. Smash on these lads. She does two damage now. I mean, at this point, we just kill all of them, right? It doesn't really matter at this point anymore. You don't even need to use me. Just kill everyone. Colonel, I entrust you a mission requiring the utmost discretion. Count Caldwell's usefulness to us is nearing its end. He must soon be removed, but in such a way as to avoid causing fear among our other allies in the north. Given the Count's well-known passion for wine and spirits, poison should prove the most effective. We shall put the plan into action once Queen Move is no longer an issue. It shouldn't be long now. Await my signal. Oh, if anyone is gonna kill Caldwell, it's gonna be a boy, Mr. Habla One, pretending to be a queen. Oh, we got a treasure map. Oh, it's right. It's right there. The treasure is right there. So that's pretty cool. Yay. Got a treasure. What's this treasure going to give us? Gimpy Gerwin, who we've completely ignored in the last episode, since I don't trust the guy. Meave rode at the front, her eyes fixed on the ground, and thus spotted the pit masked by leaves and branches. She tugged hard on her reins and steered her mount to the side. Alas, the cavalryman behind her did not follow her lead. Leaves rustled, boughs snapped, and the horseman crashed to the pit's bottom, snapping his neck. Moments later, it was clear who'd set the trap when the forest came alive and a cry rang out. <laughs> we got a Nilfgaard ambush. Okay. My two stray bombers kind of busted. I think I keep them. I think one stray simulator is enough. Okay. I think this sounds okay. It's a trap! Run it to me! It's a twap! Every turn on target start, damage the highest power enemy unit by five if its power is an even number. Well, this is why Thunder is pretty good here. For you, pal! Anything! Nice. Alright, what does this do? After three turns on turn start, trigger an ambush. Damage enemy by the amount of allied units. Okay. Life is mine now. I smell a leak. Not gonna use my leader just yet. Whatever. You mad? Don't shake that. Is that why? Whoa! What the hell? Wise choice. What the hell? Where did he come from? Damage enemy by the total amount of enemy units. Damage self and enemies by three. Death wish strengthen other Skellige allies in hand deck and on battlefield. Disgraced warrior force an enemy to damage disgraced warrior by its power, then damage the enemy by disgraced power. Death wish strengthen all other Skellige allies in hand deck and on the battlefield by two. I mean, you can try to win them all, but you won't. Is that actually an ambush? Like I don't even need to trigger these boys. Now we have this... We have the lowest unit. I mean, I don't even need to trigger these. But I'm, I'm guessing these are pretty good with... With Isbel. Huh. So let's see what this does. Oh, but this just kills it. This just kills itself. I mean, okay. Sure. Again and again and again. Feel any burning? See a local healer or wise one. Well, I mean, there's not a lot of healing to be done here. I guess I just turn one of these guys into a berserker. One bone. Majesty knows what she's doing. Oh my, yeah, this game's over. My pain serves a purpose. <laughs> Jesus Christ. These are quite big, but it's not gonna be enough. 
I think this card is pretty crazy. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? <laughs> That's guy's pretty annoying. Well, whatever. Ah, uh, sure. That wasn't much of an ambush now, was it? Retreat! Fall back! Wait, why do we have Arniolf all of a sudden? Well, who are these Skellige guys? Caught between Lyrian Hammer and Skelligan Stone, Nilfgaard was shattered, destroyed. The victors now stood eyeing each other. These islanders were not like those Meave had met before. They wore no armor and carried no shields. At their fore stood a man as stout as an ox and bald as an ancient ghoul. His men called him Arnjolf, the patricide. Oh. Thank you for your aid, Arnjolf, said Meave, extending a hand. Aid, she says. Aid? Do you hear that, mates? <laughs> the Skelligers exchanged glances, then erupted in roaring laughter. Not here to help yous, not at all. We're after killing. Join me and you shall have your fill. Join yousins? <laughs> Just who the hell are you? Meave, Queen of Rivia and Lyria. Meave, Arnjolf said, his tone sobering. I know the name. Let me goodman call ye bold. Praise your courage to the high heaven. So be it. We'll follow you into fire, wench. Just let us taste of blood. Grant us a death worthy of heroes. Meave couldn't help but smile then nodded to accept. The Lyrians stepped aside as tattooed warriors well, easy. joined their ranks. We got no recruits, boys! Hell yeah, let's go. Hell yeah, let's go. Hell yeah, let's go. Hell yeah, let's go. Alright, so let's see how, how we can fit our deck around these guys. Skellige boys. Force an enemy to damage disgraced warrior by its power, then damage that enemy by disgraced warrior's power. I'm guessing this is pretty good to get for like Isbel. Damage self by two, enemies by three, death wish strength and other Skellige allies in hand deck and on battlefield. What is what does dagger do? Play all Skellige units. Play all Skellige units from the graveyard. Damage an enemy by the total amount of enemy units. This actually has a cooldown. This is pretty nuts. Alright, we might have to change some stuff here. I mean I kinda like my deck as it is right now, but. We could like create create like a crazy Isbel combo with this. Uh, damage stuff on two enemies by three, okay. Man, I wish I could make multiple decks here, because I would just add these boys in there. I guess I could upgrade this. Yeah, sure. See how much space that leaves me? It leaves quite a bit of space, actually. I mean, if we want to play for Isbel, these guys are pretty good. Then we can also add like Arniolf, and now we're one provision over. I don't like Barnabas. I really don't. So we can add more one of these guys. But I mean, Barnabas is crazy value sometimes, so might as well just add him back. So what do I get rid of here? I guess I can get rid of, like, a Stray's Cavalry, even though they're pretty good nowadays. Even Sapper's still kind of busted. I guess we can get rid of, like, a Stray Slinger. Add, like, another 3, like a Shield Bearer. Oh yeah, Shield Bearer is crazy with, like, Isbel. We can add, like, a one-off for this. So if we have it with Isbel, it's pretty nuts. For the moment, this is looking pretty okay. Like, it's not going all out with Isbel. But it goes somewhere with Isabel, you know? Maybe I'll, I'll replace these cards at some point, but for the moment, this is fine. Oh yeah, wait, we can talk to Arniolf, can we not? Oh yeah, we can. Oh, look at that! Arniolf. Arniolf. Find a place at one of the oh, he's kind of small. Have a drink. Meet my men. <laughs> Think there's been a failure to communicate, lass? I didn't join your army to meet men, but to meet death. A good, honorable death. The quicker you lead me to that, the better. No, I don't want you to die. I wish not to pry, but why do you long for death? For only death can cleanse me of shame. You must have heard what they call me. Arnulf the Patricide. A moniker I earned. Oh, I did. To die by one's child's hand. A terrible fate. And it shall be mine as well if I lose this war. But did you earn it? This fate? What? I... Not always have I been just with Villain. I dismissed him, neglected him, but... <laughs> neglected? Listen, lass. My da, he beat me till my skin turned blue and I chucked red bile. He'd drink and beat, drink and beat. My brother, Oof. Da clobbered him to death. My ma, she took her own life. Never met this son of yours. But I know you's a bit now, and I can say this. No kind of yours needs slaying. 
Oh my. So I didn't know this, but patricide means that you murder your father. The tattoo on your head. Ain't the tattoo? Carve these runes with a knife. The method makes little difference. What do they mean? Aim here. Message for enemy archers. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Don't seem that can read it. At least not from a distance. And when they get close, it's already too late for them. <laughs> so long, Arnold. Yo, I like Ardio. Ardio's crazy, man. Your Majesty, a wealth of golden coins is beneath these runes. We can try to delve into it, but this will require time and preparation of special equipment. No harm in trying. Have Gabor lead the effort in all things excavating. He has no rival. Oh well. Sure. Oh, wait, what? Hello. The scouts rode at the fore, with me right behind them. Their task oh was to find safe passage for the rest of the force. One among them probed for the quagmire's depth, a pole of five L's in hand. Suddenly, all heard a loud clang. The scouts dismounted, then heaved a bronze statue from the mire. I thought it was, it was a human. Of slime and muck, Meave instantly recognized its elven handiwork. The sculpture was exceedingly well preserved, save one detail. Someone had removed its face, leaving a black hole in its stead. Search the environs, ordered Meave. Amongst some brambles, they discovered the entrance to a vast tomb. Its doors had been torn open. On the ground before them lay scattered bones, some yellowed with age, others fresh, cracked and tattered from having been gnawed. We entered the tomb. Silent and contemplating at the tomb's threshold. Then, torch in hand, she entered and waded into fetid waters. Yeah. Her soldiers followed close, arms at the ready, a nervous sweat on their brows. Frescoes on the tomb walls depicted Angren swamps and the beasts that prowled them. Two words were inscribed over the largest of the horrors. Gvern Iker. The bloody oh. mistress. Barnabas Beckenbauer whispered. Suddenly, a roar thundered from deeper inside the tomb. Meave turned from the frescoes to see monstrous eyes blazing in the dark. Ooh. Whoa! Eliminate the ancient fiend. Oh, damn. Then eliminate. We shall. To me! Will not die this day! Every two turns on turn start, banish a random enemy unit and spawn. Phantasm. Beast Deathwish return a unit that was banished and damage Colossal Fiend by three times that power. I think I just start with a good old Zegrin here. Alright, that's no problem. Next we're going to play you. Left, right. It's so dark and wet. Why is it everywhere we go it's dark and wet? <laughs> I don't know, Barney. I don't know, Barney. Again and again and again. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Oh, this would have been so good. Greetings. What oh, we can't it? do that. That would be kind of detrimental. Alright, see Barnabas. What does he do? Sorry, Tulips back for an encore. God, that's so terrible. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. May the stress ends here. Time I wiped it away. It's pretty hard to kill this thing. As ordered. Okay. This should can help. Ah, but this doesn't really help. What the? That's a poison. He's gonna destroy a unit at some point. Okay. I'm in the white of an eye from our fully away. Uh, 
Ah, we won't need to kill it. I mean, but we still win the battle. Ooh. This could do it. Oh, so close. This is 21. I think that's the last of them. But keep your weapons at the ready. Man, how do you kill this In thing? I mean, yeah, I need I probably need a Queen the wagon bird from the, the start. Corpse. She could not help but to shudder in disgust. Perhaps it's better, she thought, that we faced it in the dark. At the corridor's end, they found a closed door. Before any could draw near, it opened with a crash. Beyond lay a circular room. Light shone through a hole in the chamber's ceiling, illuminating a stone pedestal and the sword that lay upon it. Ooh. The air in here, it crackles with magic, whispered Isbel. Meave gripped the blade's hilt. A soothing warmth filled her arms and spread across her shoulders. Ooh. Her tired muscles ceased trembling. Her fingers, stiff as sticks, relaxed. She brandished her prize, the air hissing as the blade sliced through it. She then nodded approvingly. The reward had been worth the risk. Ooh, hello. Barnabas Beckenbauer, a gleam in his eye, asked to look at the unsheathed sword. The gnome studied the quillions intently, having spotted an inscription there. Can you say what's written there? Asked Meave. Yes, uh, perhaps. They're clear, the words. Their meaning, not necessarily so. Wieldeth me, and loseth not hope amongst the blood-red waters. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a riddle. But I've no wish to solve. We should move on. <laughs> Quickly so. Okay. No time, no time to solve these puzzles. What do you do? Shuffle an ally into the deck and play two cards from your deck. Six cooldown for this. That's kind of garbage. Like, that just swarms the board way too much. And then a six cooldown? That's not even that good. That's kind of terrible, honestly. I mean, it's alright, I guess. You can shuffle back, like, Odo and stuff, and Lemons. But then, like, you might find, like, Isbel if you didn't draw her, and then you're gonna be sad, because then you don't have Isbel in later rounds, where it actually matters. The cavalry rode at the head of the column, the queen amongst them speaking with her scouts. Suddenly, she heard a cry. Keflo Nadio! And seemed to command, and indeed, all the horses reeled, throwing off their riders. Whoa. Then, in a frenzy, they galloped into the woods. Meave, too, was cast off, and landed with a thud at her ribs. As she struggled to rise, her eyes met those of the fair-haired druid. One who feeds the marsh gods the blood of animals, the druid yelled furiously, is unworthy of beasts, deserves not their aid. Let this be a lesson to you, cruel queen! It took Meave some time to gather her wits, then she sent a unit in pursuit. The soldiers returned empty-handed, having found neither druids nor mounts. The forest had slowed the men's progress, roots binding their legs, obscuring footprints. There was naught the queen could do but bite her lip and hiss a curse. Ah, uh, that's not good. Ah, yeah, yeah. Your grace, one of our scouts has discovered a tree hollow filled with gold and precious stones when they reached in to fetch one. All he got back was his own bloody stump of a hand. There's something inside that tree and it's got some very sharp teeth. Uh, sure. I mean, morale's already as low as it is. <laughs> oh, whatever. Oh, God. All right, I, I, I kind of messed up. I knew this was going to backfire at some in some way or another, getting these druids. Hey, and then it's all pointless since now our morale's back up. But they took 1,000 wood away from us, which is terrible, honestly. What's going on here? Me and the horseman beside her exchanged a perplexed glance. They'd heard the song clearly, both its tune and its verse. Whoever had hollowed it had to be close, and given their diction rather well oiled. Moments later, a hamlet appeared to the Lyrian's tired eyes. A great bonfire blazed at its center. Around it danced peasants, barefoot, giggling, hooting, joyful and carefree. One by one, they noticed the queen. Soon, 
All were silent, huddled together, children peering from behind their backs. Fear not, said Meave. We mean you no harm. What do you celebrate? A lad's grooming? Nuptials? Nay, my lady. Hell yes. The gods have been kind. Filled us nets and snares with game. Come time, we thank them. Yes. You've things to be thankful for. We do, my lady. And we's poor folk. So a queen. Well, you must as well. Your Majesty, stay tonight. Feast with us. There'll be music and plenty of room by the fire. Eh, whatever. Uh, why not? Began me, daintily dismounting. Oh no, I swear this was the wrong decision. Us, the Lyrians needed no convincing. With astonishing haste, they removed mail and helmets, then eagerly joined in uh -oh. the fating and dance. Uh oh, I Amidst have a bad the feeling. Of flutes, I have a bad feeling about fiddles, this. All those gathered reveled until dawn. They could rest at last. Forget about Nilfgaard and the many beasts that prowled among the reeds. They'd long remember that night. Ah. The carefree laughter, peasant maids whirling in dance, the ale cold as a mountain spring, and the bread they crisped over the fire. One exchange in particular Ooh. etched itself into the Queen's mind. An exchange she overheard. Not a little. Not even a teeny tiny bit. I'll say it again. It's not your concern. Of course it's not. Wouldn't be so damn curious if it were. So be it. Keep your silence. But um, those eyes like the summer sky. Ooh. That hair like waves of grain. I see the way you gape. What do you two speak of? Uh, your majesty. <laughs> Couldn't have answered that better myself. Who does Reynard gape at? <laughs> Your Majesty. The new ballista. What else? Ah, what a piece of work. Pure art, I say. Got to rise away for an instant. Haven't you two held enough from me already? Don't play me for a fool. What's this about? Me, honestly, you do better to. It's a private matter, Your Grace. One of the heart, you might say. Uh, if you'd allow it. I like that these two are now a bromance, sort of. All right. I'll leave you to discuss whatever men discuss. Consider me gone. Me turned and walked back to the fire, sat down on an old stump. Ha! That was close. <laughs> Shh. And the faintest <laughs> of smiles crossed her lips. Ah. Meave expected the villagers to request recompense for their welcome. Yet the peasants made not the slightest mention of coin, and the queen was much moved by their kindness. Once again, those with the least had proved the most willing to share. The Lyrians did not assemble. Come hey, day. all of a the sudden, the morale's back. All right, I'd already forget about the druids. Screw the druids. Disheveled. Not normally one to overlook contempt for discipline, that day Meave understood even soldiers needed to let their guard down at times. Let's move on to the main mission. We've we've lost some resources thanks to those goddamn druids. But we're still good, I think. Uh I've gotten over it. We had a nice little feast. Whoa, 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 whoa. Turn back. What am I missing here? Oh yeah, I've I've missed one of these uh one of the treasure chests. Oh wow. This is like right at the start of the map. How did I not see this? We get Barnabas Avatar. That's pretty cool. Oh, because you infiltrate. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because you infiltrate us to the other side. Yeah, and that makes sense. You've a good heart, my lady. If you'll not have victuals, please take this. Elf engraving or some such means now to us, but Mike could help ye. Oh boy! I definitely did not look this up on the internet. <laughs> yeah, some of these treasure chests are pretty hard to get. Especially those where dialogue is part of it. Okay, where where is it? There it is. Gotcha! Okay, we need w one more. And that's this one. Alright, this one I'm not gonna use the internet for. Alright, where could this possibly be? Looks like here, right? This, this looks very much like it. Right here, right? Alright, where's the X? Wait, what? Why is it not here? Should be here, right? Right there. Ah, gotcha. 
Uh, premium Caldwell. Uh. And now we can proceed with the mission. Yes, we can. All right, let's go. In Angren swamps, one can easily lose one's way. Thick fog fills the air. Paths end without warning. Dense thickets obscure the distance. The sole way to determine one's position is to climb a tree and peer out over the canopy. This duty fell to Meave's scouts, while the force halted below. During one such delay, Meave caught the words she'd longed to hear. Majesty! Tuzla Castle! Its tower! I see it! <laughs> to her soldiers' astonishment, Meave cast off her gauntlets and started up the nearest trunk. She longed to see the castle for herself, but then she would know sweet vengeance was at hand. The Ooh. climb proved tricky, as the trunk was slippery and the branches, run through with rot, were frail. Yet Meave showed herself to be skillful and spry. As a child, she had loved to scale trees, much to her governess' dismay. Meave looked out to see a mighty stone tower outlined against the horizon. Legend holds Tuzla Castle was to have had three such bastions. Yet King Ragbard, the fort's benefactor, had forsaken the effort when yet another stone transport simply sank into Angren's boggy roads. It was a moment of respite for Meave, a moment of quiet joy. She breathed and tasted air free of the bog stench. She took in silence undisturbed by the hum of mosquito swarms. And she relished her prospects. The coming battle against Caldwell. Yeah! Oh, dude, it postponed. What are you? The soldiers stood exhausted and what are you many with raspy coughs, all sick of the meager gruel. But with the command to advance, a new strength sparked within them. Their step was lively, a fire burned in their eyes, each hoping to spill Caldwell's entrails, then dash them upon the fort walls. Yet as they drew near the stronghold, perched atop a stone aisle, their verve dwindled. Enthusiasm waned. They had taken fortresses with thicker walls, taller towers, and manned by more men. Yet they'd never seen nor laid siege to a fort standing on land so ill-suited. To rush the bulwarks through waist-deep mud. Was this even possible? Prove I was no fool to keep you at my side, said Meave, turning to Gascon and Reynard. A slaughter I must avoid. How will I do it? Your Grace, began Reynard. Set our machines to sling boulders. At the west wall, it's weakest. It is our best chance at a breach. Our men will need cover, added Gascon. Reeds we must harvest and burn. Smoke will cloak us. Conceal us from the castle's defenders. Good, agreed the Queen. Now get to work. Amidst billowing blue smoke, Lyrian footmen rushed through the breach wrought by Reynard's catapults. Though she had yet to forgive her companions, Meave had to admit, They'd given her sound advice. Hell yeah, let's go. <clears throat> Shortened battle, story battle. At the end, we're gonna kill the boy. The big boy Caldwell. We got Gabor, so we can mulligan this. This. Seize a random bronze enemy unit. Oh my. I've come for your head. I knew you'd come. Your lofty pride presages another dramatic fall. You mad? Don't shake that! Aha. Wait! Wise choice. This seizes any- I thought it was power five or less at least. Well, I guess I was wrong. Well, I can't seize it anymore now, so again that's fine. And again and again. Assassin. Every turn on target start, damage the highest enemy unit by five if its power is an even number. Oh my. Play this. Oh boy. Oh, that's so bad. There's been a mistake. I'm no mate. I'm done in a jiffy. Jesus. That was such a bad draw. Uh, he still has the lowest power units. Now we have the lowest power unit. Uh oh. Okay, I have to use Odo now. Discipline shall bring us victory! Wait, what? What does Odo do? Transform a catapult. Oh. Company! Oh. We must exploit the breach in their fortifications, Your Grace. Oh. Why would you suddenly give Odo a different ability? It's kind of annoying. Life is mine now. 
Oh, this just destroys Palisades? Oh, that doesn't matter, actually. This kills it instantly. Ah, we kind of want to wait, though. <laughs> wait, what does this do? Wait, you're serious? Apply Thick Fog to an allied row, which gives all units immune. I mean, these are my bronze cards, right? Shouldn't be any more trouble. Man, these guys, this would be OP. Wait, what? But he couldn't target it. It was immune. That's not fair. Ah, right, sure, whatever. Northern winds, smash! Bye bye. All right now, it should be easy pickings. Oh God! Give me a time. Uh oh, this is pretty good. I'd hope we could solve this some other way. Don't you worry yourself, my friend. We'll get it done in no time. All right, we're getting a lot of cards, and we're getting four points per turn. Uh oh. Uh -oh. For the queen. God save the queen. Can he do this? What's the ambush doing? No unit doing? The count is mine. The count is mine. It's gonna be like, hey, I'm so sorry. Hey, I was wrong. Immortalized in poetry and song, but not the fall of Tuzla. Lyrians fought Lyrians. Brothers killed brothers in rain and mud midst a cursed swamp. Certainly nothing to inspire a bard. Near the battle's end, Meave stormed the great stone tower to which Caldwell had fled. The queen ascended the stairs, dealing blow after blow, blood cascading down. I mean, the it's not going to be hard to catch up to this fat he ass. The top floor to find the count waiting, with no intention to defend himself. If it's mercy you expect, you'll be sorely disappointed. Mercy? I know you all too well for that, Meave. Ever vindictive and cruel. All this from a paragon of knightly virtues. You stabbed me in the back, Caldwell. And yeah, you shut up. <laughs> shut up, Caldwell. Who agreed without a moment's hesitation? Yeah, because he's a kid, you idiot. Your, soul, your flesh and blood. What's that say about you? Oh, you tread on thin ice. Choose your next words carefully. Spare me your threats. You'll kill me all the same. Death can come in many ways, Count. Some quick. Some slow. My, my. How you strut and vaunt. Terribly sure of yourself. Perhaps too sure. Your Ooh. castle is mine. I've crushed your force. I dare say no, I'm not. Precisely my point. Don't you see? The Empire's not one army. It's dozens, hundreds. It's what I strove to knock into that thick dome of yours. Alas, you're too much a dullard. Soon as I'd learned you'd crossed into Angren, I sent for reinforcements. They'll be here soon. Three regiments, armed to their teeth. <laughs> you know what? I don't even care. The Guardians seem ever to have the upper hand, yet I find the means to defeat them. Not this time, Meave. Nilfgaard comes I in always numbers. find a way. Ten Imperial footmen to each and every one of you. I don't care. I got Wagenberg. You'll not win, nor can you flee. Do you know why? Enlighten me. I dare you. But one bridge leads to Tuzla. As it happens, I ordered it raised as you laid siege. The swamps around the castle are too deep to cross. Try to rebuild the bridge, the Imperial troops will arrive before you can finish. Your men, they'll slay as you watch, and then they'll wring your neck. I got Barnabas, and I got Xavier. I don't. I got this I in no time. I, I got this in no you time. You won't live to see this outcome. I know that, but I take heart in the truth. Though the castle you've seized and will likely kill me, I've won. Outsmarted you, Meave. Twice now. And you know what? It wasn't even that hard. With those words, with his arrogance and contempt, Caldwell had gone too far. 
The Queen gripped his shoulders, pushed. Caldwell stumbled backwards, then tripped out the window. A blood-chilling shriek filled the courtyard, then broke off abruptly. Now fool me thrice. No! Try. Meave slapped the dust from her hands. The traitor had met a deserving end at last. Yes! Yet this was no yes. level in the Count's demise. If Caldwell had spoken the truth, the Queen and her army were in grave danger. Meave scouts quickly confirmed the traitor's claim. The bridge was indeed in flames, and Nilfgaardian regiments were advancing from the south. Now to confirm if there was truly no other route by which they could flee. The Queen ordered her men to ask the local peasants. One of their number, a stable hand who'd lived near Tuzla all his life, claimed a secret path led out the back of the stronghold. King Ragbard himself ordered it built. Adam dropped great stones into its swamp, one after another, like beads on a string. Bitter water covers them, so you can't see nought at start. Can make them out if you go proper slow, though. Oh. What is it? The stones. They lead to Isgith. And there, my lady, lurks an evil worse nor any black clad army. What? A beast of some sort? Some say beast, others, God. God. Gernicora, they call her. And you'll yet see, my lady. Isgith shines red with your blood. A silly tale to frighten children, Meave thought at first, then paused. <laughs> was Something like, about Hold the man's on. voice made his every word believable. <laughs> Where in the Witcher universe? <laughs> Where this shit can exist? Tell me, from Iskith, will we reach the banks of the Yuruga, near Red Lomondon, perchance? Aye, your majesty. You need but head north. And pray all along the way. Soon, Meave stood where the stable hand had said she should. At the edge of a vast marsh. Ooh. Carefully, she dipped a foot into the broth and probed for solid ground. Sure enough, she found stone. One cautious step, then another. Meave slowly strode off towards Isgith. Ooh, we got reinforcements. Oh, we got a lot of cash through that as well. Oh, you see, you see that? That does not look promising at all. With the path to Isgith hidden from view, Meave proceeded like one blind, moving solely by touch. With each step, she could not know if she would find rock beneath the black water's surface. The Queen's soldiers followed single file, carefully mirroring her every move. The Lyrians, near the end of their strength, got lucky when a light breeze dispersed the fog to reveal dry land. The queen let out a sigh of relief. <sighs> At last. Meave uh -oh. kicked off her boots to empty them of water and mud, then promptly screamed. Uh! Her legs were in leeches, slimy, bloated leeches. Ignoring the pain and trickling blood, she frantically tore them from her legs, wishing to be rid of them. Having plucked the last parasite from her calf, Meave grabbed her boot to crush the bloodsucker beneath her heel. Yet it had already slithered off. She spotted it on the trunk of a birch where, like a very fast snail, it was climbing. What the devils? But Meave's words caught in her throat. Leeches and ticks in the dozens dangled from the tree's branches. Some were so gorged on blood that their skin was translucent and on the point of bursting. Neve had some difficulty muting the urge to wretch. The fruit of this gift, she muttered, now savvy to the peasants' warnings, understanding why they never ventured into these marshes. Would that drop the morale? Oh, uh, I guess so. Makes sense. Oh, look at that. It's just full of these leeches now all over the place. Alright, this is a regular battle, so we're just going to skip to the winning screen. Alright, uh, that took quite a while, surprisingly, because these monsters are pretty busted. But good thing I didn't have to show you all of these attempts, because that would have taken like half of the video. But lady, the cottage we found wouldn't figure carved to your likeness. There's a noose around its neck and a knife in its back. It's deeply troubled the men. They say you've been cursed. The death's shadow looms over. Let them say what they will. We've no time for this. Prepare a small pyre. This efki we shall burn and show them I am unafraid. Increase the pay. I find that typical helps morale. 
Yeah, sure. Let's pay him a bit of money. I think for this map, I might need some high morale. After playing that one game just now, it seems that morale is kind of important. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's fight this little beast. Eliminate all foes. Oh my. Damage all units on this row by three. Whenever a unit appears on this row, damage it by three. Draw one card. Draw three cards. Draw three cards. Draw two cards. Draw one card. Alright. Destroy the unit to the right and boost self by its power from the artifact boost self by its current card. I, I'm supposed to kill all of these? Okay, so I have to kill one of these small boys first, I'm guessing. Destroy the Halast ally and play two allies from your graveyard. I think I do this first, though. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? One man's battlefield is another man's ripe patch for harvest. Oh, yeah. shit. What a waste. Okay, I think I might not have to kill these lads. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we kill this boy. Because we know we draw into that. I don't want to draw into that though. If the ring won't come off, just take the whole finger. One man's battlefield is another man's ripe patch for harvest! Okay, then I do this. Tiny battles. Hungry like a wolf I am. Think about and kill the these lads. They hide well. Right, I guess I killed this. I guess I also killed this. Okay. That kind of works in my favor. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Ooh, this one's good. This one dying actually is pretty good. Drawing three cards. That makes me happy. Ooh. This can also kill a lot of these boys. Okay. So, can we set anything to four out of this? We have like. 21 damage here. Okay. Can't take it anymore. Gonna need uh, three bucks of nails and a tub full of. Oh, this is just two? Oh, that's my bad. Don't you worry yourself. You this should still be okay, yeah, though. Cadaverine wins me the game. Let's go. We got Cadaverine. Wait, this, don't we already have this card? Oh, but this card is actually powerful. Hold up. Cadaverine's really good. It's basically a better version of this, of Northern Wind, right? Oh, but it only damages three units, but that's still good. I think I'd take that over Northern Wind, honestly. Especially on this map, with the monsters being as big as they are. Alright, where's the- oh, ma main mission's over there. I'm guessing that's gonna be Gurney Cora. Alright, we gotta repair this bridge so we can get over here. Ooh, another puzzle. And a treasure chest. Just what I like to see. Eliminate the Grave Hag, use your leader ability. Okay. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? Deathwish, play this card from your graveyard and strengthen it by two. Every two turn on turn start, destroy the lowest units. Damage unit by eight, use this ability eight times. Boost an ally by two and damage it by two. Blade two, draw two and play. Oh god, okay, we got a lot of these boys then. What's my leader ability? Damage the enemy and all other enemies with the same power by four, then trigger all loyal abilities. 
Every two turn on turn start, destroy the lowest unit. So we gotta get a lot of units banished. We gotta get 19 units banished. Okay, so that's the idea. Oh, we gotta basically just go suicide mission on this, right? Yeah, pretty much. One bolt's all I need. I know. Kill you. Some damage her. Give me a time. Abolist at your command. So now we kill all of this. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm a one. Let's go. Now I guess I do this. One bolt. Uh, hold up. Let him sit up there. Can she kill herself? I'm genuinely curious if she can kill herself. Oh, no. She wouldn't have been able to kill herself anyway. Okay. I think this is this is the right sequence at the start. This feels kind of good. Get a good spot here. The question is, what do I do? After that? One boat's all I need. What if not damage all of these by two? And now I can make her kill herself. Aha! We smart. Give me that golden chest. Let's go. Let's see what's in it. Let's see what's in it. Congratulations, you can use this avatar border now. I don't really care about borders. I just care about premiums. The Lyrians marched in silence, too tired to keep in step with the drums. Suddenly, the wind rose to a howl, and there was a loud crash of thunder. Beast! Meave leapt from her saddle. We camp here. Pitch the tents, quickly, quickly! As the soldiers rushed to unload the wagons, a wall of water came down, soaking them to the bone. Later, they sat in their leaky tents, huddled, teeth chattering, violent coughs rocking their frames. The storm raged the night through, then finally passed before dawn. Meave emerged from her tent to wring out her coat. Raynard approached, his gait heavy, his face grim. Your Majesty, several men of the 11th, a dozen or so, sought to flee last night. Sentries stopped and bound them. Now they await your judgment. Meave fastened her still wet coat. She knew well why the men had tried to desert. They longed for their kin, had lost sight of victory. Perhaps even no longer believed. Yet the marching and you fighting gotta destined believe. to go forever. The queen sympathized. She too was spent, and many doubts plagued her. Yet she knew the deserters had to be punished. The question was, to what extent? Meave entered the tent where the prisoners stood. Some of the men looked away, ashamed of their deed. Others raised their gazes to meet hers, their eyes red, tearful, pleading. 
Hang every third deserter? I'm just gonna demote them. I mean, hanging? Dude, come on. You all know the penalty for desertion. Meave said to the soldiers bound at wrist and foot. I ought to have every last one of you hanged. Yet, we've come far along a treacherous road. Endured hardships extreme. This I considered against your crime. You shall lose rank and receive no pay for one year. Now get out of my sight. Immediately! The no pay for one year. And rushed out of the tent. That's even worse than death. Queen might yet change her mind. Meave then left for her quarters. Anger and bitterness eating her up from the inside. Uh, she wanted to kill him, didn't she? She actually wanted to, you know, properly Gods. punish them. Have we passed the very threshold into hell? Close ranks. None is to step off the path without clear orders to do so. All right, there's another fight. All right, as I said, we're just going to be skipping this one. You will see me victorious in just about a second. Victory! Yes. Your Majesty, these cocoons. There are people inside. Judging by the colors of guardians, I say most of them has been reduced to skin and hair. The body sucked off their innards. However, a few yet live. What should we do with the survivors? Disentangle the air equipment, but leave the invaders to die? Why is that lower the morale? I mean, I'll always take that. But now I've lowered my morale, which is not the greatest of ideas to have. Oh no. Please don't be a foglet. Alright, as I said, I'll see you later. And there you go. Easiest pie. Oh boy. While accustomed to life mid swamp monsters and black magic, Angren's denizens never dared enter Isgith. The Lyrians only once saw signs of a human presence there when they spotted a group of thatched roof huts amongst alders. That settlement, is it inhabited? Meave asked, turning to her scouts. Probably Impossible not. to say from this distance, Your Grace. The Lyrians entered the village, swords in hand, prepared to fight. But not a soul nor a beast came Obviously forth. not. Some homes had collapsed from rot, while tall grass concealed the paths between them. Yet, someone had been there not long past, for fresh ghoul cadavers lay by the well. Ooh. Meave knelt beside the corpse of one cut clear in half. Ooh. The beast's killer had been exceptionally strong. And wielded a uh, razor sharp uh, uh, sword. Oh, could that More be? More likely to come around. Me leapt to her feet. A man in thick leather armor had emerged from one of the huts. Ooh. Transfixed by his cat eyes, the queen nonetheless sensed he was rather badly hurt. Were that true, my scouts would have blown their horns. The man pulled out a pendant shaped like a bear's head. It hummed and twitched as if striving to free itself of its chain. Far as monsters go. He said, lips curling into an unpleasant smile. Witchers aren't usually wrong. A moment Ooh. 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 Quick, Ooh. Ooh, that gave me goosebumps. That was badass. That was, that was pretty cool. Alright, shortened battle. We'll play against a glusty boy. We got extra cards. Are we gonna have Evo as a companion? We are indeed gonna have Evo as a companion. Every three turn on turn start spawn a base copy of random allied unit. Death wish, destroy three random allied units and play this unit from your graveyard. Well, Cadaverine's not gonna do much in this matchup anyway, so I'm just gonna mulligan it. Hey, the hand's okay. They approach! Right. Every turn on turn start damage a bronze enemy by half of Evo's power if the unit was already damaged, destroyed instead. Ooh. Oh, blood. What does blood do again? Look at five cards in the deck and then discard two. Oh, that's a lot of... Oh my! Oh, what the hell? Okay. Okay, I'm scared. I'm, I'm officially scared. Mmm, that was beautiful. Okay, I will use Beckers here. Since it does do quite a bit of damage. Oh, that's, I have no idea what's going on, by the way. Strong magic here, my lady. Something controls these creatures. Something, something. What could it possibly be? Who knows? Is it you? 
Oh, this ghoul. These ghouls are busted, man. How do I deal with them? How do I actually deal with these ghouls? Alright, play this. Tiny devils. Hungry like a wolf, I am. Ow. Okay. I'm gonna play this now. Blood washes away all play this as well. Wagenberg is going to be absolutely bananas. Stop it! Again and again and again. Oh my. What the hell is going on? Okay, could we like? All right, can we get something done here? Okay. Nice. Stop your yapping! And start digging. Nah, that's not the greatest outcome. Hmm. Uh, what? Oh, uh, yes, yes, same on it. Wait, do we... He still has the highest. Okay. Does this boost itself? Hopefully this doesn't boost itself now. Because then we can actually easily kill it. Okay, nice. Ow. Ah! Oh! Holy! Oh my! Okay. I guess that didn't help too much. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Think about the slings. They hide well. They hide well. They hide well enough. Ha ha! That'd be the last. Stupid topic. beast. Should be quiet for a bit. We got magical barrier, which actually Delirians I know what it does. I'm not going to put it in my tank for no sure. Small part to the Witcher. Thanks for the help. Name's Ivo, Witcher, School of the Bear. Meve, Queen of Lyria and Rivia. Well, well, didn't expect to see anyone out here, and certainly not a queen with an army in tow. We're <laughs> not here by choice. Long story. I bet not. No one plans to pass through Isgith. And you? What's brought you here? A contract, perchance? That's right. Hunting a monster. I know your services to be rather dear. Who could afford a witcher's bounty in these wretched swamps? Nilf guardians. Blast, of course. Of course. Preparing the land for settlement. Call the monsters, drain the swamp, then bring in slaves. Doubtless from the north. Maybe. I got paid in advance. I didn't see the need to ask any questions. Mm -hmm. But did you have to take the coin? Don't you see what they're doing? Forgive me, your majesty, but seems to me you're confusing witchers with knights errant. We don't fight oppression, right wrongs, or avenge orphans. We slay monsters for coin. Yeah. And it don't matter whose head's on the front or whose coffers it's from. This beast you're out to slay, what is it? Hang on. You mean to tell me you've led your force into Isgith and don't even know what lives here? I believe I was clear, we're not here by choice. Yeah, but now that you are here, it'll take a minor miracle to get you out. Isgith Swamps, realm of a truly dangerous being. Elves call it Gvern Iker, the Bloody Mistress. Over generations, locals twisted the name until it became Gvernikora. Indeed. I mean... I've heard it. So you've also probably seen her beloved fruit, leeches and ticks. You'd all be wise to stay away from them. This Gurnikora, what is she exactly? Depends who you ask. Elves saw a fallen goddess in her. Ooh. Never managed to cut her down while they lived here, but they did stem her growth, kept her from growing stronger. As for the local humans, spirit of a cursed princess, that's their take. Deep belief, actually. Care to elaborate? Stories that she was riding north to marry a Temerian duke. 
Whole retinue and caravan got lost, wagons got stuck, everybody drowned in the bog. Quicksand got him, that sort of thing. Gurnikora grabbed a root before the quagmire swallowed her whole, hollered for hours. But there wasn't a soul around to hear her. Leeches, hundreds covered her, settled in for a royal feast, sucked her dry, drained her to pretty much the last drop. Fear and revulsion so completely overcame her spirit, she couldn't pass into the afterlife. So she came back, revived by Isgith's magic. Ugh. A chilling tale. That was kind of yeah. That was kind of creepy. Except made up, probably. Don't believe the Elven legends either. Gurnikor is a monster, plain and simple. Extremely dangerous, sure, but just a monster. Nah. I mean, that that gives me some hope. The leeches and ticks. You called them her fruit. It's kind of complicated. We've time enough. Hmm. Gurnikor is a little like a vampire. They're kindred creatures. Except, instead of feasting on the blood of others, she feeds them her own. I'm not certain I understand. They're parasites, right? She puts them on her body, feeds them her own blood. Then hangs them on shrubs and trees. Ugh, to what end? To other monsters, their delicacies. Sweet, juicy, full of Gurnikora's blood. Irresistible. Any beast that tastes that loses its mind turns into Gurnikora's slave. Oh. So, if your paths cross and push comes to shove, she's not going to be alone. Find yourself fighting the whole damn swamp. Hmm. How are we to fight her? How might she be killed? Sorry, sharing secrets. Just not something we do. Not even with those who saved your life just moments past. <laughs> we gotta wait till she starts feeding the parasites. She's weakest then. Stand a chance to hurt her. Right. So we attack only once she puts the leeches to her skin. Yeah. And when you kill her, if you kill her, any beasts under her spell will weaken considerably. And then, you gotta burn her corpse. I mean it, understand? Burn it. Okay. And you? Will you not hunt her any longer? No, I will. Just need to prepare. Realize that today. Gotta brew some potions, blade oils. Come back in a few days. I don't even have that much time. Nilfgaard's hordes pursue us. I must march on. In that case, wish you luck. Lots of it. I suppose there's no argument that would persuade you to ride with us. Your grace, mutations strip us of emotion, not reason. The Witcher vanished amidst the trees. And Meave... Meave simply hoped her soldiers had not overheard any part of their conversation. Oh god, yes, please not. Jesus, that was kind of crazy. That's kind of messed up, you know. My lady, the homes are filled with bodies. Dozens, we see no sign of a decay, and yet they've covered with a thick layer of dust as if they've been this way for century. Give me that wyvern shield, please. Thank you. And this, this card is kind of useless. It just gives you eight armor. So there's no points. Caldwell had summoned Nilfgaardian support. Meave assumed they were not far behind. Yet in the unforgiving terrain, a full Nilfgaardian division could not hope to close the gap. Small detachments, however, light cavalry or footmen, could very well do just that. So when black-clad men emerged from the mist, the Queen was not surprised. She ordered her troops to fall in, form up, and brace to defend the line. Yet the attack never came. The invaders stood silent, motionless. Uh oh. And me got a closer look. They were slouched, ashen faced, unsure of step, and covered in sores. Isgith had treated them as cruelly as any. Teetering in his saddle, the commander broke formation. He rode forth and addressed the queen in fluent common tongue. Half my men are wounded, the others sick. Your force does not fare much better. True. Yet we outnumber you soundly. Indeed. If it comes to combat, you are certain to win. But in this damn swamp, all wounds fester. Flesh is quick to rot. You will lose many more apart from those who fall. <sighs> what do you mean precisely? Asked the queen. Her yeah, eyes what do you want? Just tell me what you want, brother. To the side. We should part ways in peace. There's a war on, there'll be another chance to fight. Perhaps even face one another. 
But not here. And not like this. Suddenly unsure, the Queen weighed the officer's words. Their logic was sound, though they could also prove a ruse. Your Grace? Xavier's voice came from behind Meave's back. We can't let them pass. They've done only harm. And they'll not stop and go home. We attack! Alas, I see things differently. Meave said with a sly smile. Crush you now. And I'll have fewer to fight down the line. Yeah, exactly. You seem sure of yourself, milady. Let me show you why. Yeah. At them! Meave gave her mount a lash of her reins and charged headlong at the commander and his force. Yeah, don't, 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 don't think you could beat me in this one. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you're fighting? Will not surrender without a fight. Order! I'm just gonna use the leader. Yeah, that's fine. Is that really necessary? <laughs> yes! Die, no god scum. Oh wait, let me just do this here. It's gonna be hard to kill this way. No! I'll kill my wagon. Stop killing my wagon, Berg. I think you'll really like this one. Alright, sweet. Ah, uh, that's not good. Gonna need um, three buckets of nails and a tub full of pegs. Ah! Life is mine now. These guys are so annoying. The they are, easier they are to target. But maybe we can deal with them, right? Wise choice. If these all stay alive, Odo's gonna be insane. Actually insane, though. Order! Oh, but they're not gonna live, are they? Okay. Army's wasted time for one like me. Think about slings, they hide well. Hmm. I mean, we should overwhelm these guys. Simple as that. Notice! All roads lead to Milfgaard! Mm. I mean, you've got to kill one at least. Hey. <laughs> nice, okay. Nothing personal, I assure you. Order will triumph! It must triumph! Ah. Yeah. I don't have leader. I wish I had leader there. That would have been so good. Left, right, left, right. Alright, so it's. I mean, let's do this first. Okay. Have I done in a jiffy? Oh, oh man, if these weren't immune, dude. That'd be so good. And we still have the lowest unit. <laughs> yeah, this should be the most overwhelming victory I've seen in a long time. In time. Discipline shall bring us victory. Kind of I'm hungry like a wolf. I am. Oh my God. Just gonna do this, right? <laughs> Nothing else to do, really. Ha! <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> yeah, this isn't even close. Hey! Off to the front yet again. Ah. Hey. Let's book the 
truth. You show no mercy, no, no mercy. Nope, never did, never will, never have. Amidst the fog and dense, gnarled forest, the battle ran its course. When the last sounds of fighting had died down, me was not sure who'd prevailed. Then soldiers came forth, fatigued and hurt, with smiles on their lips. Yeah. She saw they were hers, and only then knew victory was hers as well. But this was no time to celebrate. She let everyone rest, then gave the order to resume the march. A great Nilfgaardian force pursued them. This most recent delay had allowed it to draw nearer. That just means we get to fight them even sooner than we did before. Oh boy, and now we have to fight this little bastard. Oh, it's a vampire as well. Alright. Normal battle. You know what that means. I'll see you right there. Let's go. What's going on now? Oh god. Oh god, that's a lot of force had reached the very heart of his gift. From every branch, vine, and shrub hung leeches and ticks by the dozen. Swollen with blood, their abdomens glistened, glowing red in the misty air. Air so putrid it set Meave's head to spinning. She paused at a moss-covered boulder, pressed her flushed forehead against its cool surface. Her soldiers passed by, pallid, filthy, drained. She wished to say something, lift their spirits. But instead a cough rattled her breast. Suddenly, splashes all around me in the water. As if a rain of fist-sized drops had begun to fall. The queen lifted her heavy gaze. Seemingly on command, ticks and leeches dropped into the warm, soupy waters, then clumsily wriggled off toward a dead alder grove. Meade knew at once what skulked behind the trees. Gernicora, Isgith's mistress. Isgith's queen. Weapons at the ready! The queen roared. Close ranks! Oh, we're gonna fight her now? Converged, formed a wall of shields and crouched behind them. Alrighty Terrible. then. They stared as a multitude of eyes flashed open midst the branches while revolting, muck-covered beasts rose from the gurgling waters around. Meave silently uttered a prayer. Hail, Melitony, great mother, maiden and crow, ever have us in your care. Alright. Let's go, let's fight Gurnit Korra. And burn her, because we were advised to do so. This battle will only last one round. Okay. So what does Gurney Korra do? Every two turns on turn ends, move every ally to this row and transform into Gurney Korra Mother. Gurney Korra Talons. Every two turns before turn starts, spawn a Gurney Korra Fruit on melee row whenever Gurney Korra Fruit is destroyed. Meave discards a random card from her hand. If on the range row, drain Gurney Korra by three. When this unit's power reaches ten, explode and damage all enemies by three. Every two turns on turn start, move all allies. Okay. That's gonna be a bit of difficulty, but we're gonna get over it. We're gonna get through it. And we're gonna do it just fine. Okay, don't worry, guys. Don't worry, guys. Okay. What? Everyone! No! Rally to me! What? My trophy is horrible! Oh, no, 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 no. I need to change my trophy in that case. Oh, God. <laughs> smell a leak. That's not good. No! Majesty, these parasites, they feed on her blood! Oh no! Oh no! No! <laughs> Stop! No! I need to change! I need to... Yeah. Death is only the beginning! Oh my god, this game is just over! Okay, I need to I need to load the last checkpoint. <laughs> That's kind of silly. Yeah, this is not a good <laughs> trophy for this. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, I don't really need to cool down. I think I need to use this, and then I also need to change my leader into into probably probably into and grand blade. I think that works best for this. Only for this battle, I have to remember to change it. Alright, let's try this again. <laughs> this time, let's try and be a bit more successful. 
With like maybe like a Wagenberg or so. This is good. Deck Becker's twist is pretty good. Everyone! Rally to me! Okay. You mad? Don't shake that! Okay. Majesty! These parasites! They feed on our blood! So now they grain Gurney Carl by three, okay. I can't I can't kill on any of them. Okay, just do this now. Left, right, left, right. Uh oh. Okay. I've the white of an eye from our full eagle away. I'm gonna shuffle you back. And I'm gonna Oh, I get to choose what I play? Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> I can't mark Gurnikara. I don't want anything that damages too much. Xavier's always good, and one of these guys. I didn't know, I thought it was random. Again, again, again. How quickly the scales tick. Yeah, so he has the lowest unit now. Okay, I have to play this now. All right. When will you ever learn? Well, she's useless. Don't yeah, no I don't. Oh my. Uh, what? Oh, uh, yes, Mark yes, a yes, unit boosted by ten. Okay, I can't do that. Ooh, move six random. Oh, that's actually kind of good. I mean, it discards a lot of my cards, but it puts them on the range, which I like. Oh, now I get to play a card as well. Okay. Well, that's my bad. <laughs> Can I kill her? Try to win them all, but you won't. I mean, I can overwhelm her, but I can't kill her. Okay. Oh, two Wagenbergs. That's the answer. <laughs> that's always the answer, boys. Arnjolf isn't that great. I mean, he's actually okay. I don't need this. I don't need this. That's good. Slinger's always good. I don't need this as well. Majesty! These parasites! They feed on our blood! I think I do this now. And a Xavier. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Get into work. And I move you, you, and you. How so. quickly the scales tip. Alright. So he still has the lowest unit. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Okay. Blood washes away all shame. Okay. Now they start draining. Okay. Ghastly beasts can be slain. They can be overcome. Shoot this guy. Move these. Or do I even move them? Isn't it fine if if they just get dra if if they just drain? Again, again, again. Uh. Remember that unwarranted arrogance kills slowly and insidiously. Okay, so I guess now I just do this. We have to hit our own unit here. So now we're on 29. But they don't stop draining for some reason, which kind of annoys me. So what if I just do this? And now I take away lemons. Oh, you know what card actually would be really good in this? Is the guy who replays a special trinket. I mean, any card that just roll stacks is fine here, right? No, 
And just when you thought things were about to get dull. Nice cars. No, they don't hurt. So it's now 17, it's 35 exactly. Boom! Die! I... I believe it's dead. No, we gotta burn it! We gotta burn it! Of the battle in Isgith, Meave remembered very little. It seemed a nightmare. Its details a haze. The sensations very real. Midst a thick fog, she fought in a frenzy, desperately hacking at the scourge that advanced from all sides. In the end, silence fell over the swamp. Its boiling waters lay calmed. The ticks and leeches were gone, while Gernicora lay among rotting leaves, covered in blood, unmoving. No. But still a fierce. No, side. burn her! Oh, oh yes, thank God. <laughs> the soldier's eyes darted about in a series of silent glances. It took me a moment to realize the difficulty. They still feared it. Though the monster's lifeless body lay on the ground, they dared not go near. Were she to repeat the order, they would carry it out. Yet she did not wish to force that on them. Swallowing her own revulsion, she walked up to Gernicora's corpse and set it alight. The air soon filled with the suffocating stench of burning hair and flesh. Sparks belched out as melting fat fell on flame. Until finally, nothing was left of the bloody mistress but scorched bone. The Lyrians resumed their march towards the banks of the Yaruga. They forced their weary legs to maintain a swift pace and stole no second glance at what they'd left behind. Ooh, we got a Gernicora trophy, okay. What does the Gernicora trophy do? Seize a bronze enemy unit after six turns on turn start, return to hand. Wait, deploy? What do you mean? That's better than that. That's 100% better than that. That's ridiculous. I want to try this. I'm not going to use this leader though. Flail is still the best. Look at that. <laughs> We're going to have some Gernicora steak in the next episode. And that's where I'm going to end it. We defeated the mighty Gernicora and we're going to finish this map in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you soon.